theory says whatever there in the cause is created from it or if you uh, take that exactly what Sankhya says appearance and disappearance is called creation and dissolution Nashaha Karana Leha. The Sankhya has one sutra. Nashaha Karana Leha. Actually, nothing is created. It means nothing is new. And also, there is no destruction or non-existence of anything. The, in the form of product, it appears. And after that, uh, the product <coughs> dissolved into the cause, material cause. So, Nashaha Karma Leha. So, this uh, theory of this uh, dissolution means uh, nothing is non existent. It's accepted by Vedanta. In Gita Bhashyam, Shankaracharya says there is no absence of the object or the substance or what is there. The Sat cannot be absent. Sat is Sateva. Na Sado Vidya Devhavu Na Bhavu Vidya Devhavu. So this uh, theory is adopted or elaborated in Sankhya Darshana. So, Nashaha Karmalaya. Nashaha means destruction or disappearance is the delusion into the cause. So, this theory is called Satkarya Vata. 
and even in science this is accepted. So the nothing can be destroyed completely. Only one form changes into another. That is called creation and uh, dissolution or destruction. So Satkaryavada, so in this Satkaryavada, the all Vedantic philosophy is based on this Satkaryavada. Sadeva Saumya Idamagra Asit. The Sat Atma, the purest consciousness or existence, is always there. Sadeva Saumya. See, we cannot find uh, an example or an object to show which was not there and then it came. So therefore, Sat Eva. So that existence, the purest existence, can only take forms or it can only manifest in different forms. So that is called sat, uh, Sadeva Saumya Satkari. And that Sat is connected or that Sat the characteristics of Brahman. So therefore, there is no absence of anything. So Satkaryam, to Shaktasya Shakti Karanas. So he has given five different uh, uh, reasons why the Sat is always there, its existence. <coughs> so when we say this world is an appearance, we should understand from this point of view. So when we say the world is an appearance, it is only appeared as an object because the cause of the creation what we see as an appearance has the uh, the same characteristics as Sat, as Brahman because Sat Brahman or Sat Prakriti or here the consciousness Purusha cannot change its characteristics and Sankhya says, no object can change its characteristics at any cost, at any level. <coughs> Only the form is changed, that is called the manifestation. The original characteristics cannot be changed, the nature of an object cannot be changed. So in this way, in some uh, level of understanding, we say uh, it is a material cause. In another level, another form, we say it is efficient cause. And when the body and mind is activated in the presence of uh, consciousness, we say this is all living beings and when body and mind is not activated in the presence of consciousness so it means body and mind is not there it is called non-living beings so this is how they make the difference so consciousness and uh, conscious being and unconscious being so prakriti and purusha in Vedanta, in this uh, context, Vedanta says there is no unconscious being at all. The all, whatever created is consciousness. But the problem is consciousness is not appeared because it needs some support to appear. So, 
uh, unmanifested or unappeared consciousness. Consciousness is there. The here they uh, make two parts like uh, Prakriti and Purusha. So in the presence of Purusha and the presence of uh, consciousness, the Prakriti takes the forms. And when they have a connection, we will discuss it in the uh, 30th or 30. Uh, two thirty-three uh, karikas. So, in the presence of consciousness, and then they have some connection, that reflective connection. Mm, reflection comes. So, the uh, consciousness is reflected in the mind. Then, uh, we think of uh, we have this conscious being, uh, which has mind and intellect. So that we will discuss later. So now this uh, Satkari Vata is established in the ninth sloka. After this, the so tenth Karika, the comparison of manifest and unmanifest. And 11th Karika, the comparison of uh, manifest and unmanifest as well as the consciousness, knowing. Hedu madanitya mau vyapi Hedu madanitya mau vyapi Hedu madanitya mau vyapi Sakriya manegam asritam lingam Savayam Savayavam Paratantram Savayavam Paratantram Savayavam Paratantram Vectam Vibaridam of Vectam Vectam Vibaridam of Vectam Vectam Vibaridam of Vectam The manifest and unmanifest. So, Hetumat Anityam Avyapi Sakriyam Anekam Asritam Linkam Savayavam Paratandram Vektam. These are all the characteristics of manifest. So, one by one, Hetumat. Hetu means cause. The possessing of or depending on a cause. It is always like that. The product depends on cause. And product is with cause. Therefore, he to mat. And then anitya. Since it is a product, it cannot be eternal. It is produced. So therefore, anityam, non-eternal, perishable. That is, all the products or effects are perishable, non-eternal. Hedu mother anityam. And then, avyapi. These effects or products, comparatively, non pervasive of Vyapi. Vyapi means all pervading and Avyapi means unpervading or non pervasive. Infinite is Avyapi and it is finite like that. And what uh, Sakriyam? Then this uh, effects are always actions, kriya, sakriyam. So sakriyam means mutable or with an action. Now what is an action? So action is defined like that. 
कारण व्यापार निष्पाद्या क्रिया कारण व्यापार निष्पाद्या क्रिया क्रिया मींस एन एक्शन एनी टाइप ऑफ मूवमेंट्स और चेंजेस और व्हाट एवर वी कैन से एक्शन इवन थॉट प्रोसेस इज एन एक्शन ओके सो एक्शन इज ऑलवेज ए a manifestation or uh, some change in the karana in the cause so, karana vyapara vyapara means change or some movements uh, that karana vyapara nishpadya so the action can be seen in the cause only so sakriya so there is if there is an action you see in the cause like when the pot is produced the pot is produced it is being produced the action of production or making of that pot we see in the clay the pot maker does actions on the or in the clay so therefore now this uh, pot is not produced it is not not a product now it cannot be seen separately but the action is there that is okay that we can understand now once the pot is produced now we have the shape of pot and it is in the condition we can use it is usable now we are bringing water in the pot or taking it and all we are doing many actions and where this actions are taking place in the pot seems to be in the pot but actually even those actions are in the clay only. now clay has some other form it is uh, strong enough to carry water previously it was not in the shape it was in some other shape so now it has got a particular shape which is useful for carrying water or something like that so all the action can be done so these actions are there in the karana karana vyapara kriya karana vyapara nishpat so without support of that it cannot be possible this is all no they have done a scientific research on these things so then they say this so you you what we think or uh, when normally we see objects outside the objects have action and is happening everything is happening but actually it is happening somewhere else and we are thinking somewhere else so therefore super important so misunderstand so sakriyam sakriyam vitt kriyas and then anekam anekam ekam means one anekam means many and this objects the manifest would be many fold anekam multitudinous so with the many forms or many parts like that anekam aasritam asrita means dependent it is not independent it is dependent on something what the cause it is dependent it is supported by cause so anekam asrita it cannot be set independent and it cannot work independently so it it cannot it cannot be perceived independently like that everything should be there when we 
C pot. What we see? We see clay, the shape of pot. But our perception is we are seeing pot. But actually, we are seeing the clay in the form of pot. So therefore, it is always different. Anegam ashritam lingam. Now, this all definition it is defined one by one. What is manifest? What is unmanifest? So now we don't know why we are learning all these things. We have no idea. No, we are only giving the informations. So what is prakriti and all those? Just uh, uh, defining. Now after some time we will understand why this was this discussion was there. So there, this is the systematic learning. First we uh, prepare ourselves with all these uh, informations. Then the philosophical uh, teaching will come and after that. So we will use all this. So, ashritam linkam. The so, linkam, linkam means, uh, has two meanings. The so, linkam means a mark or sign. We already know that. Linga lingi. So, sign or uh, indication is called linkam. Lakshanam, lingam is said. But another meaning of this lingam, here it means merchant which is subject to the solution because the comparative uh, comparative uh, compared to uh, the cause and effect when we compare both the cause is more permanent than the effect effect is impermanent and cause is permanent. Comparative. The ultimate cause will be uh, eternally permanent. So here lingam mean merchant which can take the dissolution and can be destroyed. So here we have given another meaning also. The famous meaning alternative mark or sign is called lingam. So here the lingam is karyam. Now lingam is karyam, lingam is sakriyam, and lingam is uh, non eternal. So it comes like that. Similarly, savayava, all the products has parts, made of parts, made up of parts. Avayava means parts like uh, particles we have everywhere the parts are there particles atoms and then like that it goes like that so savayama the any any product we take will be with the avayams with the parts so when you separate parts the product disappears when you connect part the products appears. It means made up of part. Now what what this part is? What is the definition of part? Now in this Nyaya uh, uh, Shastra they have given the definition of parts. Now we say atoms and particles like that. So what does it mean? Part means we have like our uh, limbs now in our body. These are also parts. We uh, separate all the limbs, there is no body we can see. So there is no body. So body disappears. So what are what is said to be part? Part means dravyaram bhaga dravyatvam avayavat. Dravya aram bhaga dravyatvam. Dravya means substance, one matter, any kind of matter. So one kind of matter which produces another kind of matter is called part. You see how correctly they defined. Huh? So one substance 
which can produce another substance together is called part. This is all formula and definition. Full of definitions and formula. If you go to Nyaya Shatra, it's also like that. You have to remember all these definitions. Now, what is avayavam? What is part? This is the part. Dravya arambhaka dravya tam avayavatam. Dravya arambhaka dravya is avayavam. So if you remember all these you know, Sanskrit uh, definitions, it is very useful. This is all called Panditya. You know, what is uh, uh, what is Panditya? What is uh, 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 when, when we are when you are become scholar? So you we know all these definitions. Anyway, so if you know uh, definitions and these uh, shlokas, then that's so all. If you memorize all this, <laughs> so made up of parts. So this uh, 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 product, any product, is made up of parts. So when we uh, connect parts, so the product comes, and when we disconnect parts, the product goes. So samyoga and viyoga, in Nihaya also it is there, samyoga and viyoga. So dravyaram bhaga dravyattam avayavattam. Okay, so parts. Then paratandram. Paradandram means subordinate. It is not uh, individually working, individually acting. So it is all paratandram. Here the tandra means controlled by, or uh, the object which is not functioning itself. The substance which is not functioning itself. It needs some other support. Here, any product you take, it needs uh, trigunas according to Sankhya. In according to Vedanta, we need uh, the existence of Brahman, Ishwara. Without Ishwara, nothing can uh, move. So, Paratandra. Here, the, in the presence of consciousness, uh, any product needs three gunas and the next uh, sloga, no, after the uh, 12th sloga we will see the definition of gunas. So they are uh, mutual connected, they are, they are uh, always uh, working together. So therefore it is paratandra. Each guna is dependent on another guna. So therefore Paratandra, Vektam. Vektam, we already know, manifested. The manifest is called Vektam. Up to this, there are all the lectronas or definitions of the characters of Vektam. Up to this point. So, Hedumat. Anityam, Avyabi, Sakriyam, Anegam, Asritam, Lingam, Savayam, Paratandram, Vektam. This is what Vektam means, manifest. Now, Vibaritam Avyakt. So, uh, the Vibaritam means opposite of this. So, add the opposite of this, then you get the definition of Avyaktam, unmanifested, the reverse of this. The unmanifested is uh, defined that way. So we have made a small chart in next page. Difference of Vekta, Avyakta, manifested and unmanifested. Hmm. Clearly given. So Vektam, Avyaktam, the Ahedumat possessing a cause and Ahedumat non depending on any cause. So non-eternal and eternal, unperverting, all perverting, sakriya means active, nishkriya means inactive, avyakta means inactive, uh, manifold, anekam, ekam means single, like that, dependent, non-dependent, Lingam mergent or traceable. Lingam has another meaning also, traceable. And alingam non traceable, non mergent. It is not merging into anything. 
or non consciousness conscious achetanam so this is all achetanam no chetana no uh, conscious consciousness is there in that so vyaktam and pradhan prasava dharmi so prasava means producing this vyaktam and pradhanam produces so prasava dharmi dharma dharma means character it has a characteristics of producing ah prolific ah the producer the producer producer of the uh, creator of world and all those whatever it is there so prasava dharmi vyaktam so now 1 2 3 4 5 6 characteristics are similar to pradhana and vyakta तद् विपरीता तथा च पुमा नौ प्रधान प्रकृति कंपेर टू द पुरुषा इट इज जस्ट द ऑपोजिट ऑफ दिस जस्ट द ऑपोजिट ऑफ दिस इट मींस आ अत्रिगुणम विवेकी अभिषय असामान्य इट गोस लाइक दैट तद् विपरीता तथा च पुमा now in sankhya some places they say prakriti and some places they say pradhan two words are used they are uh, synonymous for the prakriti when we they say pradhanam it is uh, uh, in relation with the dissolution prakarshena dhiyate अंतर्लीयते इति प्रधान एंड प्रकर्षेण क्रियते इति प्रकृति द टू वर्ड आर लिटिल डिफरेंस द प्रकृति मींस व्हिच प्रोड्यूसेस अ कॉज इन द फॉर्म ऑफ अस अ प्रोड्यूसर अ क्रिएटर नाउ व्हेन से प्रधान द प्रधान मींस in the state of dissolution the cause in the state of dissolution so this way pradhan so pradhan means uh, sattva rajasam samya avastha so there uh, sattva rajas tama ani nikri priyam state so prakarshena dhiyade andar liyate idi pradhanam it resolves everything inside then it is called pradhan तद विपरीत तदाश्च उमा हाँ यस अनदर दिस चार्ट इज द फॉर ऑल एवरीथिंग सिमिलरिटीज ऑफ व्यक्ता एंड अव्यक्ता एंड डिफरेंस बिटवीन पुरुषा सो सिमिलरिटीज ऑफ व्यक्ता एंड अव्यक्ता इन वन कॉलम एंड अनदर कॉलम डिफरेंस विद द पुरुषा त्रिगुणा एंड निर्गुणा सब पुरुषा इज निर्गुणा अनटचड विद गुणास एंड अविवेकी एंड विवेकी डिस्क्रिमिनेटिव एक्चुअली कैन से दैट देयर इज अ डिस्क्रिमिनेटिव कैरेक्टर इन पुरुषा बट एक्चुअली दिस डिस्क्रिमिनेशन इज आल्सो इन प्रकृति ओनली बिकॉज़ फॉर दिस डिस्क्रिमिनेशन वी नीड इंटेलिजेंस इंटेलेक्ट so without intellect it cannot be but intellect alone cannot discriminate therefore the reflection of purusha on intellect is a discriminative uh, nature matlab the intellect become uh, the intellect uh, get the discriminative uh, quality that is from uh purusha so without that it cannot discriminate so the discrimination happens in intellect but the quality it gets from purusha by the reflection that we will learn later in the after uh, 18th karika it will come and in 20th karika so therefore uh, we can say that discrimination uh, discriminate uh, the power of discrimination or whatever 
that it is from Purusha only because it is uh, conscious, consciousness. So the uh, buddhi, uh, buddhi, the intellect become conscious because of consciousness. Therefore it gets the uh, quality of discrimination. So the, like that it goes. And uh, Vishayam object and Purusha is always subject. It cannot be made as an object. Purusha is always subject as a knower. In Sankhya, they don't say Purusha is knower. Vedanta, we say Drashta and Drishyam and Darshanam and all this. In Sankhya, ultimately Purusha has no characteristics of seeing also. Purusha is not a seer. But it has the quality or uh, efficiency to see. Therefore, it is always subject. Not residing on any this uh, uh, residing on many is a samanyam. Samanyam and it is a samanyam. Purusha is always alone. It has no connection with anybody. Asankoya and Purusha. And Purusha is Chedana with consciousness and Aprasava Dharmi. Purusha is not producing anything. According to Sankhya, Purusha is not producing anything. It is not a cause at all. And similar properties of Purusha and Avyakta Prakriti. So now that is indicated here because from both sloka we will learn this as additional uh, information. That is, Purusha and Prakriti has some similarities. Purusha and Prakriti. Now, like uh, Ahedumat. Purusha is also Ahedumat and Prakriti is also Ahedumat not depending on a cause, both Purusha and Prakriti. And Purusha is also Nityam, Prakriti is also Nityam, permanent. And Purusha, Prakriti both are pervading. Here comes a technical problem because Purusha is also all pervading and Prakriti is also all pervading. Purusha is also Nitya and Prakriti is also Nitya, both are. Akriyam, immutable. Both are immutable, Prakriti and Purusha. Uh, and uh, non dependent. So, Purusha and Prakriti both are non dependent. Aparatantram. Alingam, non mergent or untraceable. Purusha is also untraceable and Prakriti is also untraceable. It cannot be non. So both has a similar characters. And Purusha and Prakriti can be uh, known through inference only. Therefore it is untraceable. Mm. Then Nirvyapakam. So without uh, Niravayam, without parts. So Purusha and Prakriti has no parts. And this uh, Sattva Rajasthama, Prakriti has Sattva Rajasthama. But the Sattva Rajasthama is not the parts of Prakriti. The Sattva Rajasthama, the uh, Triguna, the, uh, together is called the Prakriti. It cannot be said that the part of the Prakriti. So, and Swadandram, non-dependent, non-dependent, independent. So, uh, so it is not depending on anything. So independent, uh, both are independent. So this way, uh, Purusha and Prakriti has some similarities. Now, the next Karika, 12th Karika, we are going to discuss the characteristics of Gunas described here. So Sankhya, Sankhya is the only philosophy which is talking about Trigunas. And Vedanta also took this Trigunas from Sankhya. 
Sri Shankaracharya says in Bhashya, uh, regarding uh, Tripunas, we have to study Sankhya. So, uh, we have taken the Tribunas theory of uh, Tribunas from Sankhya. And in uh, Bhagavad Gita or uh, some other Upanishads, some discussion of Tribunas are there, but all are from Sankhya. So, what they say about the Gunas? Pritya Pridi Vishadat Makaha Pritya Pridi Vishadat Makaha Pritya Pridi Vishadat Makaha Prakasha Pravritti Niyamartha Anyonya bhivavasraya jalana mithuna vrittaya scha gunaha So general characteristics of gunas that is described here and each guna will be explained later in other uh, next slog. Here uh, the general characteristics. The Preeti Apriti Vishadatmakaha Prakasha Pravritti Niyamartha Guna. So these three gunas have three qualities. Preeti Apriti and Vishadha. Preeti means pleasure, Apriti means pain, suffering, and Vishadha means dullness. Vishadha means dullness. So, Preeti, Apriti, Vishadha, Atmakaha. So, pleasure is a quality of Sattva, and Apriti. The pain is, called, is the quality of uh, Raja, Rajas, and Vishada is the quality of Tamas, Dalmas. Prakasha Pravritti Niyamartha, then how they act is an action of Gunas. So Prakasha means serving the purpose of knowledge. The sattva supports knowledge, therefore it is called prakasha. Prakasha means, here it means jnana, knowledge. And pravritti, the raja is serving the purpose of activity. The pravritti, any action is because of raja. And then Niyamarthaha. Niyama means restraint of uh, knowledge. So Niyamartha, which is uh, causing, uh, which is uh, obstructing the knowledge. Tamas is an obstruction for knowledge. It is not supporting knowledge. So when we have uh, dullness or in our mind is not working properly, it has no energy, we feel uh, dull, uh, no, sleepy and like that, it means tamas. So when we are in that mood, we are unable to think and unable to decide, unable to uh, take any action, we are not interested. So it means that is the state of tamas. So it is not supporting action or knowledge. So in that state you should not take any decision. We should take decisions when our mind is fully active. That is a stimulated mind. Otherwise the decision will go wrong. Therefore, after having so much 
full of stomach of meal, you should not uh, take any decision. So it take rest because all energy went to stomach. So if you take decision, it may go wrong. Now, therefore, uh, it is said like that. So Pritya Priti Vishad Atmagaha Prakasha Pravritti Niyamartha. Niyama, the word here Niyama means and not like rule or uh, anything like that. It means obstruction, restraint of uh, opposite of knowledge. It is called niyama. It says avarma, it is a cover. Anyonya abhibhava ashraya jalana mithuna vrittaya. Now, so many things are there in this. Anyonya abhibhava. Having mutual domination. Anyonya abhibhava. It means when sattva is dominated, the product or the action will be sattva vritti, the action of sattva. And when raja in domination, you will be more into action and have, there is a chance of suffering. You know, you will do more action and then more suffering. Like that. Uh, so that the having mutual domination means each one will be dominated at one stage. So having mutual domination. And the interesting point is uh, if Sattva is dominated, the Raja and Tama will support its domination. And that is the thing here. Because it is supporting Otherwise, it cannot be. And when, uh, similarly, after some time, after some time, uh, the chance uh, goes to the next guna. The uh, raja will be dominated. So then, sattva and um, uh, tamas will support its domination. It means it will keep quiet. It will not take its action. Uh, otherwise, there will be always conflict. As in that conflict, nothing can be produced. So, uh, in uh, first hour, uh, if uh, Sattva is dominated and the second hour, the Raja is dominated or Tama is dominated and the third hour, the Tamas is dominated. So, in that case, other two uh, Gunas will be suppressed. So, they will keep quiet. But that, that way they support. Uh, when, when we have quarrel in the family, so we have quarrel. So we should keep this. So if somebody is uh, rising up, so keep quiet for some time. <laughs> it will rise up, and after some time, oh, you know, this uh, will change. So we keep quiet, then uh, there is less chance of uh, problems, conflicts. So it happens like that. So here, uh, these trigunas uh, follow this rule. So anyone abhibhava. Having mutual domination. And similarly, having asraya, mutual dependence. Mutual dependence. Similar, just now I thought I said. So if uh, one wants to rise, it needs two other support. So mutual dependence. They are dependent on each other. So no single guna can take actions. It needs other two gunas support. This way it is dependence. And janana is uh, having mutual production. Each guna is it, it produces its uh, effect as the prakasha, pravritti, niyama by the support of other two gunas. So, uh, janana, anyonya, having mutual productions. Anyonya mithuna vrittaya. The console, console, consolations, the consonants. So, mithuna vrittaya, a coexistence with the two. So, they act together. Mithuna means two or three. Act, act together like uh, two characters 
Mithuna means two or three. It can be sometimes three, sometimes two. So when two are together acting, then the third one is keep it keeps quiet. It means the uh, the activity of the third is not seen there. So it is called Mithuna Vrittaya Punaha. So this way, Anyonya Ashrayam having mutual uh, domination and all these characters are uh, the basic or the general characteristics of the Gunas. They are always uh, dependent on each other. So here uh, one point uh, should be mentioned that here we have Ashraya and Janana. Ashraya and Janana. So Ashraya means uh, dependence. The, uh, they depend on each other for dissimilar effects. Dissimilar effects means Sattva and Tama. They have just opposite characters. Like uh, Sattva is Prakasha or Jnana and Tamas is Ajnana or uh, uh, Dullness. Okay. So now when this opposite two characters are there in the same object or same substance, how can it work? Because if Jnana is there, then the Tamas will opposite that. Like uh, day and night cannot be together. Therefore, they say this is Ashraya. In this uh, uh, production, they uh, support each other to produce dissimilar effects. Dissimilar effects, they make dissimilar effects. Therefore, it is Ashraya. And Janana for similar effects. The Ashraya for dissimilar er effects and Janana for uh, similar effects. Like, no, when you sleep well, after waking up, you have a fresh mind to think and read and understand and study after sleep. Now, what happened? After sleep, you got some fresh energy. It means you have you are become sattva, sattika. When you are in the sleep, you are in tamas. So out of tamas, you got sattika, sattva. Is it possible? It is. Is it how it is possible? Because tamas cannot produce sattva. So in this uh, production. They support each other like that. So after uh, thinking uh, or after uh, reading and uh, working with the mind for a long time, you become dull. It means your energy is down. Now you, you feel sleepy. The sleep is also necessary and this mental activity is also necessary. So this way they make dissimilar effects supporting each other. Normally when we say one support uh, other, uh, other, uh, other, uh, other um, uh, character, it means they are supporting in a mutual understanding. It means in a uh, similar way. But here the dissimilar way support is there. So therefore uh, we, shall, we should understand this point. Say, uh, ashraya and the Janana, similar effects and dissimilar effects. We need both. Tamas also is necessary and Sattva is also necessary. Om Purnamadha Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudasyate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnamidam 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 Purnam